Hi everyone, Anthony here from Creativa Solutions. Today I'm looking at financial accounting and we're focusing specifically on partnerships. I've seen a lot of students struggle specifically with the piecemeal liquidation. So today I'm going to take you through the theory relating to partnerships and I'm then going to look through an example from start to finish showing you how to actually approach a piecemeal liquidation question. Alright guys, obviously Creativa Solutions is here to help creatively add value to help find solutions. So the video that you're currently watching is going to be covering the theory relating to partnership liquidations um, and then I'm going to film a separate piece for you which will take you through an example question showing you the calculations and the steps to complete a peaceful liquidation. So if you do want the question please go to the website www.creativasolutions.com Download the question and answer, which will be posted there. And also follow us on Twitter at creativo underscore s. And stay tuned and watch our YouTube channel for any support content that will be released. All right, guys. So to start off, liquidation of partnerships. Do partnerships last forever? No, they don't. Partnerships can end. And if you've gone to the theory, you'll remember that a partnership is not a separate legal entity. So partners actually create the business. Partnerships, let's say A and B, okay, there are two partners operating a partnership. They are the business. A and B are the business. If one partner wants to leave, this partnership has to be dissolved. Or if new partners had to come into the business, then you'd also have to inverted commas dissolve the partnership and then create a new one right so in this particular video we're going to be focusing on the liquidation right so what happens when partners decide to end the partnership and go their separate ways obviously we need to look at valuation okay because those partners would have created value over the life of the business and something like goodwill which you've covered in previous sections okay relating to purchase goodwill so when two partners are operating and let's say a third partner wants to join the company then there'll obviously be goodwill that will be created for that particular entity all right so the first bit is obviously looking at what will happen when a partnership is insolvent okay so then we're obviously considering a liquidation and insolvency or sequestration Right, so if we're looking at the liquidation, what is actually going to happen? Well, we know a partnership needs to, need to settle all its outstanding debt first before paying out any of the partners. Right, so assets must be converted to cash. We obviously need to sell assets in order to cover the liabilities. And anything that's left over will then be paid to the partners. Right, so most important to remember, guys, is to always settle outstanding liabilities. Right, creditors are paid out first prior to... To any of the partners right and that's where the joint and several liability uh, the, the unlimited liability comes in terms of being jointly and severally liable for all the debts of the business right so there are two types of liquidations there's a simultaneous liquidation and there's a piecemeal liquidation if you are doing things simultaneously you're going to be looking at one account a liquidation account where everything is sold off you pay off your liabilities and then partners are paid what's left Right. What I've seen students struggle the most with is the piecemeal liquidation. Right, and the piecemeal liquidation is looking at different stages. Okay, so we're going to be selling assets in steps or stages purely because we're wanting to try and realize the best possible market value for those assets. And in an economy that's not doing so well, you're not going to want to sell assets at less than their market value. Okay, you'd want to hold into those assets and maybe sell them later to realize more or fair value even, so that you can pay out the partners their, their share of the business. Right, and we'll be using a table with columns. That's normally how it's tested in terms of application. We obviously need to draw up columns representing the different accounts. And with that, you'll then be able to complete the piecemeal liquidation to work out the interim payments. All right, guys, so to start off, just give a few steps about the simultaneous liquidation. Right, you're going to obviously look at accounts that pertain to the to that pertain to the partner, right? So you get a drawings account, okay, which is representing money taken from the business by the owner. You also get current accounts, which are your short-term accounts relating to the partner. You get goodwill, which is a non-current asset, 
and that non-current asset is obviously worth something to the existing partners. Okay, remember the existing partners would have created the goodwill and they would be entitled to it. Any reserve accounts also would be representing an entitlement to the partners okay, that they've set aside for future use. Right? And if the partnership is going to be liquidated, obviously those accounts need to be closed off to the capital account for each of the partners. Okay, capital represents the long-term entitlement by each of the partners, and that's why we close off all those shorter term, inverted commas, okay, shorter term accounts to those particular or to that particular account being capital. Right, you then prepare a liquidation account which contains everything and you'll also have a bank account open as well. Okay, so simultaneous is a lot easier than piecemeal. Piecemeal is slightly more challenging, let's say, to approach because there's a lot more steps in terms of liquidating assets in stages, right? And I find students struggle the most with that. Right, and the last is obviously to record the settlement of the capital accounts. Right, the liquidation account is like any other tier account that you're familiar with. You'll have a debit side and you'll have a credit side. Okay, and we're closing off accounts to this particular account, i.e. liquidation. Okay, so an asset would be closed off to this account. A liability will be closed off to this account. All the assets and liabilities will be sitting in this one account. Okay, you would then settle okay, all your creditors. You would realize cash by selling your assets and whatever is left would be paid out to the partners. Okay, so the balancing figure will be viewed as a debit here, okay, if there's a profit that will be transferred to capital, okay, because if I'm debiting the liquidation account, I'll be crediting the capital. And if we have a credit as a balancing figure on this account, right, that will be seen as a loss, and that loss will be then allocated to the capital account of each of the partners, okay. You're crediting this particular account, you're then debiting the capital account, which is a reduction in owner's equity. Okay, and the converse, if I'm balancing off this account and I've got a debit, and if I'm debiting this, this specific account, I'm obviously crediting capital, which is an increase in owner's equity. All right, and this is the key in terms of more difficult questions, okay, that can be examined from a partnership liquidation point of view. We're obviously going to have to look at this method, which is a piecemeal liquidation. Okay, there are other methods you could approach, okay, I'm just going to be focusing on this particular one purely because students are going to need to know how to process a piecemeal liquidation, which is then focusing on selling assets in stages and allocating what's left over to partners. Right, so what is a liquidation? Well, selling assets. Okay, if I'm looking at a piecemeal liquidation, I'm doing that in stages. Okay, assets are going to be sold, okay, so you can possibly re receive the most benefit from those assets, okay, the most cash from those assets to then pay off the partners. Right, so that you'll see the steps are very similar to simultaneous liquidation. The only thing that's different is this, okay, the recording of interim repayments, okay, in terms of paying off expenses, settling liabilities, obviously getting certain receipts, and interim repayments would then be paid out to the partners. Right, and only paid out to the partners after all the liabilities of the business has been settled. Okay, and then we look at settling the capital accounts as well as part of the process. Okay, but that's obviously done in stages because their capital balances will be paid out over a period of time. Okay, so we spoke about a partnership, okay, existing and in the process of being liquidated. Right, the problem with this is what happens if you have partner A who has been a very responsible partner. Okay, and you've got partner B, which is very irresponsible. Okay, let's say A is responsible and they've got 2,000 worth of capital in the business and B only has 100 capital in the business. Okay, if I'm looking at 2,000 capital and 100 capital, obviously you can see A would have been the more responsible partner. He would have drawn less from the business, so he would be entitled to more. But now, what happens in a piecemeal liquidation? Let's say you're selling off assets, and now you've sold, it, so you've sold off assets, and you're left with 500 cash. Okay, who gets that cash? Does A get the cash, or does B get the cash? Right. Obviously, if you're looking at B, B could be paid out, and B could leave this partnership already. A has a lot more invested in this particular partnership. Okay, so A is going to have to wait longer, perhaps to receive all 
his capital in the form of cash. Right, so obviously if they're liquidating the partnership, A and B might not be the best of friends and there could be a little bit of tension between the two and they'll be fighting over the cash that has been realized from selling off an asset. Okay, what's stopping the partnership for perhaps paying out B first rather than A? Right, so to avoid an ugly situation in terms of A and B fighting and complaining about who gets paid of who gets paid what, what we're going to be using is the loss absorption capacity method. Okay, so piecemeal liquidation. The solution to this, okay, that problem or the potential problem is to apply this loss absorption capacity method. Okay, if we apply loss absorption capacity method, the partners can't argue and fight over who gets paid out the cash. Okay, interim payments are going to be made based on the current capital balances, right? And we're going to anticipate a maximum loss, right? So should we not be able to sell the remaining assets okay, and realize a maximum loss, i.e. zero for all those assets that are remaining, what's the actual owner's equity that's left out and who would be paid out the cash in that particular business? Again, there's a few steps that you can follow. I am going to take you through these steps in a worked example. Right, so always consider what the general ledger balances are for each of the different accounts. Okay, the most important account obviously to look out for is capital. Okay, remember capital is the account that represents what the partner is entitled to. Okay, so we'll analyze the balances, we'll process any expenses, we'll debit them to the capital accounts, we'll close off unsold assets to capital accounts, and we'll then look at the anticipated capital deficit to the capital accounts. Okay, you'll, you'll see this process in action when I actually look through a worked example. Okay, guys, so that's the theory. Last but again, activities do help a lot. Okay, with subject like accounting, practice does make perfect. Okay, so please watch the next video now showing you exactly how to complete a piecemeal liquidation question. If you do want to get a copy of the question and answer, please go to the website www.creativosolutions.com and you can download some additional support material there to help you. All right, so good luck with your studies, guys. Follow us on Twitter and obviously watch the YouTube channel for support material. If you like the video, give it a, give it a thumbs up and please post any comments telling me what you're struggling with and, and, and I might make a video to help you with that particular topic. Alright guys, that's the end of this one.